Praise you, Lord Jesus. What is this button? Nope, don't want that button. Trying to ask me to launch a poll. I don't even know how to use the computer that well. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All glory be to you, O Jesus. Praise you, O God. Praise you. Thank you for sending Jesus, the only begotten Son, Jesus God in the flesh, God that laid down glory and became a man and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ, the only way, the only truth, the only life is through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All glory and power and honor to you, Jesus Christ. We pray in no other name. Jesus says you have not because you ask not in my name to the disciples. So we pray only in the name of Jesus Christ as our high priest and intercessor, according to Hebrews. Uh, Jesus Christ, the only way, the only truth, the only life. Jesus Christ, the name that is given for all men to be saved is by believing on Jesus Christ, believing that Jesus Christ died for your sins and my sins, for the whole world's sins, that whosoever will believe in him shall have everlasting life. So those who believe, believe to everlasting life. We believe that Jesus is the only way, truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. If you try to use any other means other than Jesus Christ, it's a robber and a thief. So Buddha did not rise from the grave. Uh, Islam is a false prophet. Uh, Muhammad, he had demons. Uh, he had a pedophile daughter. He married a girl nine years old. He says you can beat your wife, but we don't need to get into all that. It's just a false prophet. There is no other name given under heaven on earth that men can be saved through Jesus Christ. So the doctrine of Jesus Christ is important since he said no other way except through him. So Jesus said, all who come after me must deny themselves, pick up their cross and follow me. Jesus said, count the cost all the way to the end to be my disciple in Luke 14. He even shows us that if your family is a stumbling block, you must hate them. Now, he, what he's saying is, if they're keeping you from following Jesus, they are a stumbling block to you. Count the cost all the way to the end, like building a tower. You wouldn't build it halfway, like sending out a military uh, for a war. You wouldn't send it out halfway. Jesus says, go all the way to the end. Jesus Christ's words, not mine. Jesus said, those who abide in me will bear much fruit, John 15. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Your branch, if you, be, if you stop abiding in Jesus Christ and you end that way, your branch withers and is thrown into the fire. So you have to abide in Christ all the way to the end. It's by faith we are saved in Jesus Christ. By faith we're saved. So it's not my works. Nothing I can do will earn salvation. It's what he did on the cross. So by faith I'm saved through grace, not of works, or I'd be able to boast through faith, the grace that has come unto all men in Titus 2 says it teaches us to deny ungodliness. So we deny ungodliness now. We um, live soberly and righteously. We redeem the time. This is Titus 2. We are zealous for good works. We're a chosen special people. So that doesn't mean we're saved by those works, but that means that we are transformed by Jesus Christ. So we follow him. We know that Jesus said things like, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, teaching the doctrines and precepts of men. They worship me in vain. So if you veer away from Jesus Christ and you believe in a Jesus that doesn't judge, then you're not in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Praise be your name. Praise be your holy name, Jesus Christ. So believe on Jesus Christ. If you are in sin, Jesus wants to deliver you from it. He wants to let's sins of the body are fornication, drugs, drunkenness. These things are not for a born again believer. Paul says, but such were some of you. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, be not deceived. These do not inherit the kingdom of God. And he says this over and over again. So he's telling you, like I've told you before, Neither fornicator, idolater, covetous, adulterer, um, revilers, drunkards, sodomites. These things 
do not inherit the kingdom of God. But such were some of you. Hallelujah. So let's talk about the remnant. I'm going to use Revelation. I'm going to use Fox's Book of Martyrs. I'm going to use the Old Testament. So God always has a remnant, a remnant who hear his words. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. So if you hear his words and, and you're quickened by his words, whether it's from a street preacher, a video, or just somebody doing Bible studies, which I do six to eight hours a day, people, I want to say something right now. Please do not send videos to pr promote your point of once saved, always saved, or pre-tribulation, or any of your points. If you want to do that, do that in Messenger. I don't look at too many conspiracy videos at all. I don't look at those. I, I just show Scripture. Go through Scripture with me. Jesus shows you in Matthew 13 that there are some believers who hear and believe, but their belief is shallow. So if it's once saved, always saved, why did these believe? They believed. They heard the word of Jesus. They believed in his death, burial, and resurrection. They believe his word. But these don't have much root. And as soon as persecution or tribulation for the word, Jesus Christ, comes along, they become offended and they don't endure to the end. So these are people who claim they believe. And I believe these are people who could be sown in as false teachers into the church that are described as tares, lies sown in. And I, I give you the verses real quick. Second Corinthians 10, 11 and 12. Uh, Satan masquerades as an angel of light, and so do his ministers, feigning righteousness. That means pretending. The Bible says, let your faith be unfeigned, pure faith. Let your love be without hypocrisy, abhorring what is evil, clinging to what is good. So we want to have true faith. We want to follow Jesus Christ, his words. His word says, narrow is the way, and straight is the gate. And Few there be that find it, but broad is the highway that leads to destruction and many go therewith. Jesus says, strive to enter the narrow gate. That doesn't mean that we're saved by striving. It means that we're making sure that we're following Jesus and all of his words where he tells us to go. And the simple doctrine of Jesus Christ is you have to deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. So you're, you have to deny the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. This is an ongoing sanctification for your soul and my soul. So Jesus talks about in Matthew 18, he says, you've got to be born again in John 3 and Matthew 18. And he gives us an understanding of that. You've got to be converted like a little child. When, the, when you see the Old Testament, you see that the, the, they, they had the spirit of Christ on them. That's what we learned from 1 Peter 1. So the prophets that were speaking for God, and here's what the Bible says, Mercy triumphs judgment. So God is always extending mercy, but we have to grab it. We have to receive it. We have to believe it. We have to obey it. Uh, what is it? Acts 5.22 or somewhere around there. The Holy Spirit comes on those who are obedient. Okay, so God has a remnant in the Old Testament. And when you read the book of Jeremiah, you see that God used Babylon to judge the church for not receiving um, mercy triumphs judgment for not receiving mercy. So when God sent the prophets, he sent Elijah, he used Elisha, he sent Isaiah who was martyred, he sent Jeremiah who was martyred, he sent Ezekiel who was martyred, he sent Zechariah who I believe was chased uh, from the synagogue, from the church there, and he sent them. To hear the word of the Lord. Turn back. You're now doing false worship. So I showed you how Jesus says these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Teaching the doctrines and traditions of men. Keep your videos of, of these people with traditions of men. Trying to say that we, we don't have to stay in faith all the way to the end. Jesus said you have to endure to the end. You have to be willing to suffer you have to be willing to be persecuted. The Bible says that all who live godly shall suffer persecution. Trying to avoid that is what I would say is religious. That's pretending. That's pretending but having no testimony. Having no from darkness to light. Having no redeemed story in your life. Having no uh, conquering of your sins, 
of addiction, drugs, porn. You can't touch that. That is not for a Christian. So that's false teaching. Anybody who's told you that you can stay in that is false teaching. So many Bible verses warning no sorcery. Revelation 21, to those who overcome, I will be their father and they will be my sons and daughters. But to the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the sorcerers, the idolaters, the whoremongers, the murderers, they'll be in a lake of fire. Revelation 22, outside of God's kingdom are dogs, sorcerers, sexually immoral. These things, my friends. So there's nothing new under the sun. The New Testament does not completely throw away the teaching of the Old Testament. And I'll prove it to you right here. Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law and the prophets. Don't think he did. I came, he says, I came to fulfill them perfectly because we couldn't. Now he says something like this. Don't teach anyone to break any of the least of the Old Testament. If you teach people to do that, you will be least in the kingdom of God. So Jesus shows you, let me get to this really quick. Jesus comes back bearing gifts. The other word for it is payback. So to those who have done good, to the resurrection of the just, to those who have done evil, to the resurrection of condemnation. Okay, so the prophets, the saints, we see it in Revelation, they, they, they get their rewards. So we want rewards. We want to follow Jesus. And, and we're going to follow him through persecution, through suffering. This, that's what builds our faith. It, it polishes our faith. It builds our faith. It, 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 our faith is cherished. Hebrews 11, when we get to it. So when Jesus used Jeremiah, Jeremiah was prophesying for God for years and years and years and nothing came to pass. He's told to go stand out in front of the gates of the false church in Jeremiah 7 saying, you're listening to false and deceptive words. You're, and then he tells them later to tell them that they're blind, that you guys are blind. He tells them you're backslidden. God also says, I'm married to the backslider. So God is calling all of the backsliders back. He's calling everybody back out of the addictions, out of the false worship, out of, out of sin. Real perfectly, those, none of us are sin. Per, we're not sinless. We're not perfect. Anyone who says they're perfect, it is, is not telling the truth. We're not perfected. We're still being sanctified. We're being purified as a set apart holy people. So I'm not preaching that we're perfectly sinless, but I'm telling you these Bible verses say they do not inherit the kingdom of God. And you should have a testimony of overcoming something as a born again believer. That should be part of the proof that you're that you're of God. He puts his spirit in you. You have you have a testimony of what he's done to you. You you felt his power through being delivered. You've heard his voice speak to you in the night. Something has happened to you to where you no longer continue, can go back to your sin the way you did before you were born again. So Jeremiah is saying these things are going to come upon them. 70 years of captivity. Babylon's going to come invade. And Jeremiah, none of the prophecies were coming true for a while. And people started pointing fingers at Jeremiah, laughing at Jeremiah. And, and Jeremiah said, I curse, curse it is the day I was even born. Everybody curses me. Something to that effect. Pull up the scripture on it. He's saying, everybody curses me. And he didn't want to be God's prophet for a while. I don't know how long, but there's a period of time where he, he's like, I can't take it anymore. And he leaves. And then it's even worse for him. He says, it's even worse. And so Jeremiah has to come back. And in Jeremiah 15, 19, we read, he had to repent. And Jeremiah is one of the closest types and shadows of Jesus Christ we get in the Old Testament. He was thrown in prison multiple times. They wanted to kill him, the church. I'm telling you about the church. And uh, they came and visited him. One of the guys came and visited him while he was in jail secretly because they didn't even want to be associated with him. He wouldn't have got any likes on Facebook. He didn't see any real fruit from his ministry, but he's sure uh, up here, here on earth. But he sure sees it in glory, right? He's a martyr. So the martyrs go right underneath the altar of God. He is, he is part of the foundation of the, uh, of the new heaven and new earth. He's a pillar. Now here's what it says in Jeremiah 15, 19, when he comes back to the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord to Jeremiah, if you repent and give up this mistaken attitude of despair and self-pity, then I will restore you to a state of inner peace so that you may be stand before me as my obedient representative, his mouth. 
So prophets are the mouth of God. And if you separate the precious from the worthless, examining yourself and cleansing your heart from unwarranted doubt concerning my faithfulness, says the Lord, you will become my spokesman. Let the people turn to you and learn to value my values. But you, you must not turn to them with regard to their idolatry and wickedness. So Jeremiah 19 is also told to go take out the, take the religious leaders and the elders and take them to the son of Hin in the pot shard gate, which is modern day Planned Parenthood and bring an earthen vessel and break it. It's a picture of rep reprobation being past the point. Their heart is so hard that it's a picture of, of judgment of God. So also what we learn in Jeremiah is that the first exiles like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, why would you say they're Babylonian names that, that King Nebuchadnezzar gave them? He turned them into sun god names and stuff like that. You read the Hebrew names. These are the first captives, and you learn that when you see the two figs. So he was getting them away from false teaching. God was. And he was showing you that, hey, the remnant is the ones being called out of the false church. Okay? Very clearly, Hebrews tells us, do not forsake the gathering of the saints as we see the day drawing. So it doesn't mean that we all should be lone, lone rangers with no accountability. Bible studies that I do with Amber, Kimberly watches them, but any Bible studies that we do together is part of church. It's part of edifying before we get sent out. I only go out with people street preaching that are going through the scriptures together. We're walking in one because otherwise you see pride. You see different people walking in different ways. We've got to do the Bible studies together. We've got to know what season we're in together when we go out and street preach. For the most part, I go out with Doug, who doesn't do that with me, but he's been out there on the streets for 20 years in front of universities. And I don't do that with him. So I'll be clear on that. He doesn't do all our Bible studies. But you could see the difference with me, Amber, and Kimberly because we've been doing Bible studies for a very, very long time. I'm trying to get Jason and Andre to do them with us too. Or to at least read all the Bible stuff that we're posting. Um, all of us have to be, if you're with me, I have to see that once saved, always saved is a man's doctrine that doesn't teach about sanctification. It doesn't teach about the levels of inheritance for heaven and the, and the levels of hell that Jesus preached on. He truly did. If you have eyes to see. And he says, if you are of him, you will understand his parables. So that's what we're preaching and teaching is going, wow, look at we can see what the parables are saying more and more in Revelations opening up to us. Okay, so God had his remnant in Israel get taken captive by Babylonian um, 70 years. So when you read, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and give you a hope not to harm you. In Jeremiah 29, do you understand that that is given to, to the ones that are in prison for 70 years. And he's speaking of a future hope, of a future glory. They had to suffer 70 years. They were in Babylonian captivity. So there's a remnant from the Old Testament that I'm showing you. Okay, Now we have the remnant in the New Testament as the day approaches where it's getting darker and darker. Where Jesus said it's going to be like the days of Lot which is Sodom and Gomorrah, rampant sexual sin, kids being taught they might not be male and female, the stuff you see on TV, the internet, media, Hallmark, you see false Christian worship people like Dolly Parton on the side of that strut bar. You can see that God said it's going to be like the days of Lot, which is Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus said, don't be like Lot's wife and look back. The judgment came on Sodom and Gomorrah and she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. Jesus is telling you last days are going to be like that. He says it's going to be like the days of Noah. So we see that. Jesus says it's going to, there's going to be an increase in pestilence, earthquakes, uh, signs in the stars, the moon, um, the, the raging sea, tornadoes, lightning storms, all of these things. The weather phenomenon that is increasing is what Jesus said is another sign. So there's signposts of his coming back. Uh, Daniel says information will pass to and fro and knowledge shall increase when it's that time. That's the internet. So Revelation chapter 1. We learn Jesus Christ resurrected. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
how beautiful, how powerful, how mighty. Please start reading the book of Revelation. Read it over and over again. Don't just do video studies on it. Read it for yourself and see what it's saying. And with Google, with information passing to and fro, the way God allowed me to publish so many books, calling me to write 20 years ago, is Google, Bible Hub. You punch in what the what scripture says and it shows all the Bible verses from the Old Testament onward that's gonna fit it all together so that you can go to the scriptures yourself and Paul said, be a Berean and test everything to see if what is being told to you is true. So Revelation 1, we see Jesus resurrected. And John, John says, I, John, was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard a voice behind me as one of a trumpet. And he turns and looks and one like the son of man, shining like the sun, clothed with a garment down to his foot with golden girl and paps. With eyes of fire, hair white as wool, feet as burnished bronze as if burned by the fire, the voice of many waters, the double-edged sword in his mouth, which is the word of God. Go to Daniel and you're going to see Jesus pictured to you like that in the book of Daniel. How amazing is God's word? It fits together perfectly. Okay, so we see that. We see Jesus and then John falls down as if dead under the resurrected glory of Jesus do you know that your soul is going to go on in eternity? And I'm pleading with you to go to heaven by following Jesus, by believing on Jesus, by confessing Jesus with your mouth that he is Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead and denying the ungodliness and crying out to the Lord God and saying, Lord, I need help with whatever sin it is that you're stuck in. And you need, you need his grace to, to, to get you through it. The, the Lord Jesus took the addictions, took smoking, took any masturbation, any porn. Some people don't even like to hear that. They think that's too, too in their business. But my friends, I'm telling you, the Bible says no fornicator inherits the kingdom of God. And this is why people are depressed. And this is why people take their, their drugs. Because they're not preaching Jesus. They're not going out and getting persecuted. They don't have a strong testimony. They still listen to itching ears saying that, oh, I can do that. His grace is sufficient. And at minimum, you're losing your inheritance by not finding your calling. Oh, thank you, Lord. What is your calling Jesus is calling you to find your calling and election. Peter says, if you make sure of your calling and election, you'll never stumble. So I know my calling. The Lord called me 20 years ago. The Lord has called me and called me and called me. And it says many are called, but few are chosen. So we've got to endure to the end. Find the Bible verses that talk about that. Many are called, but few are chosen. You go to Revelation 19, those who are are called, chosen, are, and faithful are coming back with Jesus on white horses, it says in Revelation 19. You want to be walking in white. So now we see uh, John fall down as if dead. This is John who had his head on the disciple. He's the disciple that Jesus loved, his head on Jesus' chest. Some say he's a virgin. Some say John was so pure he's a virgin. He's the only one not martyred. And we're going to get into Polycarp in a little... You know what? I should get into Polycarp. Before I forget. So John is now seeing Christ resurrected. And it's beautiful. It's powerful. It's, it's, it's what... It says no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has even imagined the glory of those that's going to come to us who love God and follow Jesus and follow him, and just follow him, and love him, and find your calling. So some are called to be preachers, some are called to be teachers, some are called to be evangelists. Uh, the church is built on apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, uh, all these different things. Some are uh, helps in administration, helping, praying. So find your calling. What What is it the Lord has you do? What is it? So that's what you want to do is find your calling in these last days. So John, he is called to be the one to get revelation. All the other apostles have been martyred. He is called to not be martyred. And that's pro prophetic from Jesus Christ. When Peter's saying, well, what about him? And he says, don't worry about him. Peter knew he was going to be crucified upside down. And John, this is what we're seeing in the book of Revelation. 
So John falls down as if dead and Jesus touches him and he says, fear not, behold, I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. I have the key of death and hell. How powerful is our savior? He has the key of death and hell. It says in Revelation 1 that he washes us in his blood and makes us kings and priests unto our God. So before we're born again and we're listening to wicked music, maybe the drugs, maybe the porn, maybe all these things, whatever your testimony is, you were of the father of the devil at that time. You were not following Jesus. So you were really, you know, working, you were a workman for the devil. You were a king and priest for the devil. You, you hear these wicked musics, Black Sabbath, um, Highway to Hell. They're literally singing for Satan. Same thing with the rap, same thing with a lot of the speed metal. I listened to it when I was in darkness and, and, and thought I was okay, but I was a fake believer when I was, as a runaway kid, and I'm not going to do that whole testimony, but that's what I was, was a servant of the dark, of Satan. So now, as a born-again believer, we, we are now kings and priests unto our God. Now we're working his will. Jesus said, not only narrow is the way and straight is the gate, and few there be that find it in Matthew 7. He also said, many are going to say on that day, Lord, Lord, we did all these things, prophesied, built big churches, we did all these things. We cast out devils. We did all these things. And they're arguing with Jesus. And he's saying, depart from me. I never knew you, ye workers of iniquity. So they were false. They were false. They were living in sin. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we don't want to be false. We want our love to be pure. We want it to be true. And as, it, as, as Jesus continues to wash us in his blood, he makes us kings and priests unto our God. Okay, so then we get this other... We get the words of how to describe Jesus uh, as the Alpha and the Omega, meaning the beginning and the end, the firstborn of the dead, the faithful and true, the great Amen, the Word of God, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come, the Almighty. The Greek word for it means panotraker. He is the Almighty One. This is just powerful. Just lift up his name. Praise you, Lord God. So we see that as he describes what is going on with the seven churches which are in Asia? Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Praise be your name, mighty are you, sovereign Lord. Holy are you, Lord God. Glory be to you, O God. And we got to finish Revelation 1 because this is important on end times. It says, every eye will see him coming on the clouds, seated in glory. Every eye will see him seated on the clouds, on his throne, coming back. And it says, even those who pierced him. So there's a third of Israel who are going to be redeemed, says the Old Testament. There's two thirds that are going to go through death, it looks like. Okay, so there's a greater Holocaust, it says, coming for Israel. That's why we never want to be against Israel, my friends. We pray for Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So even those who pierced him, he's going to pour out a, a spirit of supplication and grace on Israel, and they're going to mourn for him. At, they're going to mourn as a father for his firstborn. And this is just showing you that's that remnant of Israel. And now listen to this. Every tribe of the whole world will see him and wail because of him. And then it says, even so, meaning it's going to be a hard period of time. That's what that's saying. Even so, amen, come Lord Jesus. And it says, he says this to John, write down the things that are, the things you see, and the things that shall be prophecy. Blessed are those who hear the prophecy of this book, Revelation, and hear it. So read it aloud and hear it and keep the things that are written therein for the time is at hand. And so James tells us, don't be a hearer of the word, only be a doer of the world. You foolish man, you show me faith, I'll show you works. A double-manded mind is unstable in all his ways. We're getting this from the book of James. So we want to hear the word, eat the word. Receive what it's saying. And Paul and, and John is saying, he's being told to say, write down the things that are, the things you see, and the things that shall be. So we get a lot of visual description. Like we know a dragon is a different way of saying Satan. We get a lot of visual. So we don't make a doctrine completely on visual. But we can see what Jesus is saying to the churches. To the church in Ephesus, I know your works. So... Again, we're not saved by works, but we are going to be judged on them. That's what we're seeing here in the book of Revelation. I know your works, says Jesus Christ, and all the descriptions I gave you. 
the firstborn of the dead, the faithful and true, the great amen, the word of God, the firstborn of all creation. These are ways he describes himself to the seven churches. I know your works, that you've labored for my name's sake, that you cannot bear those who are evil, that you've kept the patience. This is Ephesus. But this I have, so all those are good, but this I have against you. You forgot your first love. Remember where thou art fallen. Repent and do the first works. But this I have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate, says Christ. To those who overcome, you will eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise, my God. So in the very beginning of Genesis, we see the tree of life. Now we see it in the book of Revelation, in the midst of the paradise of my God, for the overcomers. Okay, so these guys might have gotten a hard heart. For this group of people, they were out there street preaching. They might have got a hard heart. You have to forgive everybody that's in the parables. If you don't, you're not forgiven. You can have doctrine right, but if you have a hard heart and you stop forgiving others, and the first works are wanting everybody to be saved. It's clear in the Bible, in Paul's writings, we want all men, we love all men created in the image of God. Now, are all men born again? No, some are still of their father, the devil. Jesus says in John 8, why can't you hear my words? Because you're of your father, the devil. So, his sheep hear his voice. You, if you ever see me street preaching, and this is where we see people that say they're Christian come against street preaching, we give them the very words of God and they say we're not doing it right or they use curse words at us. Or in the case of uh, in front of the strut bar, um, a niece of a mega church pastor was cursing F-bombs at us, came out, had a demonic response through our signs. This is why we video everything, part of it besides a video ministry, is to protect ourselves. And, sh and it also sh bears witness of the fruit of where we're at, right? And, it, and it's also like, it's not easy to deal with sin. It's not. When, when my friend who God used as a prophet told me 20 years ago I was working for Satan, I, didn't, I knew it was true, but my self-justification, I wasn't born again. I was living in the flesh. God ended up using what he said to me. Sometimes there's that war that we don't like right? But that's part of following Jesus down the narrow path. There's going to be persecution. There's going to be that stuff. And yes, we have to learn to walk in the fruits of the spirit. We have to receive conviction when we don't answer things well, or we, we feel our own flesh. Let's say we answer well, but we feel our own flesh. I feel that sometimes. And I ask the Lord, help Lord. I don't like how I felt my flesh respond. Okay. So the church of Ephesus, you've got to have your first love for Jesus, wanting all to be saved, but keep perfect doctrine is what he's saying. That what is perfect doctrine? Jesus, his words, don't go outside of his words. Trust all of his words because Matthew 13 shows you the, you can believe, but then become offended by his words and not be able to handle tribulation and persecution. True. Okay. So the next church of Smyrna, you think you're poor but you are rich. So this, this group of people, they, they might have had to be the ones that have to deny their own family and, and end up on the streets or uh, hidden under underground churches in Nigeria. So let's pray for the persecuted Christian church in Nigeria, Hong Kong, North and South Korea, China, Afghanistan, where, where persecution happened majorly and people were dying for the name of Jesus Christ by the Islam people. Okay, in Afghanistan, right after we preached in front of uh, Rick Warren's church, it just happened to be that way, that that's what happened, that we were saying, you can't pray in an Antichrist prayer. Come out from among them. This is false. We love you enough to tell you that this is wrong. And people cussed at us from that church. So it's just bearing fruit. Praise you, Lord. So we pray for the persecuted Christians everywhere they're at. That, and we, we love them. And they're the part of the body that's hurting. So this is Smyrna. You think you're poor, but you are rich. The devil's going to cast some of you into prison. Be faithful unto the death. And we see Smyrna re represented also with a false church. So I want you to see each church has a false church in it. Those who claim they're apostles and are liars, sneaking in, saying they're apostles, self-naming themselves apostles in these last days and not warning you about the one world religion, not warning you about uh, abominations and sorcery shots or, or doing, trying to do both. Sneaky. And that's what they did in the church of Ephesus, calling themselves apostles, found them to be liars. There's, there's false church. Smyrna, those who say they're Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan, false church. So Jesus is showing you there's a true church and a false church. There's a real remnant and there's a false a false. That's what he's showing you. Just read Revelation 2 and 3. 
So this one has to overcome even to death and, and, I, and you will not taste the second death. That's the overcomer for Smyrna. These are words from Christ. The church of Pergamos, where Satan's seat is. I know where thou dwells ever, even where Satan's seat is. If you can just please look at this in the spirit, the doctrine of Balaam is so wicked that they're right there with the synagogue of Satan. And who does Jesus point to? His faithful martyr Antipas, who was martyred a torturous death if you Google search it. He was put in a coffin, tortured. Doctrine of Balaam did not partner. I did not. Maybe some of them came out of the doctrine of Balaam. We're told in 2 Peter 2, uh, they make merchandise of you. These false prophets and false teachers, they, their eyes can't cease from sinning themselves. They make, they use feigned words to make merchandise of you, telling you that it's okay, telling you what you want to hear. It says, Paul says that they will heap up teachers who will preach to itching ears, having a form of godliness, but denying the power they're in. Then it says, from such, turn away. So you're not supposed to partner with falsehood. You're supposed to re go rebuke one-on-one, -on -one, Matthew 18. Also in Titus, we see don't rebuke an elder without two witnesses. So you want to do it the way Jesus says to do it. If they don't receive it, then whatever the Lord's called you to do, whether it's leave the church, most likely if they're doing witchcraft and if they're false teaching and if they're joining with the Pope and if they're joining with this last day's uh, one world religion and, and these things, you're not supposed to stay there. No, you're supposed to go find a church that's teaching the Bible the, cleanly the way it is. Okay, so the church of Pergamos, where Satan's seat is, where the doctrine of Balaam is, all kinds of wickedness in this church, one faithful martyr Antipas. So maybe people came out of it. It's called the madness of the prophet. All these supposed prophets claiming Trump was going to be in. It was just so grievous. I preached in... Uh, uh, on the streets in um, D.C. And it's just so gross, all the idolatry. I just saw it. It was so gross. And I just had the sign that said, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this age has blinded their eyes. And then I used Ephesians to show you that, that you know, that that's, our war is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. So I made sure my Bible sign said that and I preached the word of God. But it was grievous on how a much idolatry there was, uh, people trying to join to get up on the stage with all kinds of false teachers. It was so gross and people cursing, like just no separation of truth from profane at all. And it was gross. The Lord, the Lord blessed me for going out in like 30 degree super wind as high a hill as I could and preached out there. So this Balaam is wicked, my friends. It's wicked. It's selling out to the world. You know, only the demons try to figure out a way to not be part of something. Like, oh, the demons will try to figure out why you can do your drugs, why you can take your sorcery shot. That's not the way that God wants you to do things. He wants you to do things from a pure heart, faith unfeigned. The doctrine of Balaam sells out to the world. So you see that in the third church of Revelation 2. Now to those who overcome, you will eat the hidden manna. So Jesus is the hidden manna. Jesus says, I have food that you don't know about. And he's communing with God and everything he, every word he utters is from God. And so that's, he is the word made flesh, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory and we've tasted and seen. If you are born again, you've tasted and seen and you will not deny his name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you want to follow Jesus the way he's telling you to follow him and be an overcomer. And he will give you hidden manna to eat. And he will write a new name on you that no one else knows. This is an eternal intimacy with him to this church. Now to the church of Thyatira. Now there's so many good works here. There's a lot of charity. Your last works are better than the first. But this I have against you. You suffer that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and lead kids into sexual sin and food sacrifice to idols. I gave her space to repent and she repented not. Behold, I will cast those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation. And I will throw her children into a sickbed and kill her children. And all the churches will know that I am he that searches the reins, which are thoughts and hearts. So Jezebel repented not. No other no other thing we don't in all seven churches we only see that one time so it's a spirit that's going forth it fits with the rest of revelation 
we also hear great tribulation. So if you're touching Jezebel, you're going into great tribulation. So you have to overcome these false doctrines, okay? To, to those who don't have the doctrine of Jezebel, that knows the depths of Satan as they speak, also a different, um, knows the dark arts of her, of Satan. KGB says it this way, other ones say it that way, both saying the same thing. I, I like the one that says that as they speak for Satan, because that's what we see in other scriptures, that Satan masquerades as an angel of light, so he's faking, he's feigning righteousness, and his preachers are preaching for Satan, false teachers. And so that's what Jezebel is. She's a false teacher. She's she's come in, she's come in claiming she's a prophet, she's she's out of order, she's teaching over men. Um, and, and the men love it so. They just love it so in these last days of apostasy. They just love it so. Now, I'm not saying women are not called to be prophets, uh, street preachers and all that, but they are not called to teach over men in church. 1 Timothy 2, elsewhere, 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. And this is where we see you suffered that woman, Jezebel. Praise be your holy name. There's many strong, strong women that are doing better, better Bible studies than, than a lot of men where, where I live. And Basically, whatever domain the Lord has allowed me to use on Facebook, there's a lot of strong women doing very good Bible studies. I'd love to see the men doing the Bible studies all the way down. Uh, Paul Bartizalo, uh, there's a lot of people that do. So praise be the holy name of Jesus. Rant, uh, let's see, Ryan Liberty, just many people do. But spend the time in the word. Read the word. Go over what I'm saying. Use the scriptures. Uh, post the scriptures. See how they fit together. Understand the judgments of God in the parables. Okay? So this is showing you great tribulation for this doctrine. It's showing you the deeper things of the last days. To the church of Sardis, this church, you think you're alive, but you're dead. There's only a few walking in white. Strengthen the things remain. Remember the word that's been handed down to you. This is what Jesus says. I have not found your works perfect before my God. Now to this church, to those who overcome, I will not blot out the name out of the book of life. So we're in the book of life. And this is a text right here that shows you that you can leave the faith of God and go into false doctrine and false teaching that is against Jesus and, and, and be removed. That's what it's saying right there. Revelation 22 says the same thing. If you add to the prophecy of this book, you will get the plagues. And if you take away from it, you will have your name pulled out of the book of life. Philadelphia, he that is holy. So this is the way we describe Jesus to Philadelphia. He that is holy, Jesus Christ. He that is true. He that has the key of David. He that opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. I know your works. So these works, you've labored, you've kept the patience, you've not denied my name, and you've got a little strength. So for this church right here, you see that Jesus shows you a picture of judgment, just like you see in Matthew 17, Mark, uh, uh, Matthew, no, Matthew 7, Matthew 13, Revelation 14. You see uh, other scriptures that point to judgment. This one, you actually see that there's a separation that occurs. And it says, Behold, I will make them who save their Jews better the synagogue of Satan bow down and worship before your feet so that they will know that I have loved thee. And for this group, I will keep you from the hour of temptation that's going to come try the whole world. The hour of temptation, try the whole world. It's the very end before Jesus uh, comes back and rules and reigns. And that's, that's also said in Thyatira. But to those who overcome, who do not have this doctrine of Jezebel, who knows the depths of Satan as they speak, I will grant to rule and reign over the nations. Even as I overcame and broke everything to shivers, I will give you the morning star. So it's showing you judgment. Different uh, rewards for people for, for the judgment of Christ in the very last days in the book of Revelation. And so we also see to those who overcome, even Philadelphia, even Smyrna, the ones that have no, you know, this is what you've done wrong, even those overcome to the end. For Revelation uh, 3, Philadelphia, I will make you a pillar in New Jerusalem, which is coming down. So Jesus is building a New Jerusalem. That's why Jesus says, I go away and build uh, my, the house has many mansions. I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't so. And that's what it's referring to, my friends. And so here's the last church of Laodicea. Not one good thing said. I wish you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. So this is talking about a false church. It's just a fake church. It's just the only way to say it. Because nothing is said good. It's saying that I wish you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And this is their problem. Because you say I'm rich and have 
plenty of goods and have need of nothing. So because they feel rich, they have need of nothing and they have plenty of goods. But Jesus says you're poor, blind, naked, wretched, and miserable. I want you to contrast that with Smyrna, who thought they were poor, but they are rich. So the church that has nowhere to live, you know, the apostles were martyred, except for one. Uh, many of them that believed in 1 Peter 1 were dispersed, and they believed in the word of the Lord that Jesus resurrected. That's our future hope. Jesus resurrected. We're seeing him in resurrected form. And so this is what Jesus says to the lukewarm church. Could be backsliders, could be people do, doing drugs right now that say they believe, but they're lukewarm. They're not fulfilling their call on their life. They're not being sanctified and delivered from their, from their drugs, from their addictions, from, from things that are against God. And Jesus says, buy from him gold tried in the fire that you may be clothed in white. The shame of your nakedness be not exposed that you may have eye salve to see. Jesus says, be, I chasten those I love, meaning he... He, um, he, he, it says, my, your rod and your staff do comfort me in Psalm 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your rod and your staff, they do comfort me. They make me lay down near, near still waters. I will fear no evil. So if you're following Jesus and he makes you lay down and he chastens you, it says that that is good. If you feel the conviction, that means you're of God. That means your conscience is not seared. That means that you still are being called by God. So he's chastening those he loves so that you may be clothed in his righteousness. And before I get to um, Polycarp, I want to tell you about the martyrs. So a lot of the book of Revelation is about walking in white. So that's what Jesus is saying. Buy from him gold tried in the fire that you may be clothed in white, that you take all your addictions to him, that you take all your, all your still flesh sins, if you're still in any, and you take them to him and you say, Lord, I, I have not got full anywhere else. He or she has hurt me. The church has hurt me. These other things have hurt me. My parents hurt me, whatever it is. And I'm still angry or I'm still cursing and I'm still doing these things. Jesus is saying, fall on your face and give it all to him and he will put white robes on you. And now you're going to be, you're going to feel his spirit in you. You're going to walk in holiness with him. And you're going to be tempted to go back, maybe to the drugs, maybe to he or she. And the Lord, if you go back, you're not going to like it. And his spirit that's now touched you and in you is going to fight against it. And if you, so that's why it says it's a war against the flesh and the spirit. It's a flesh. Your flesh wants to go back to the drugs and to overeating and to whatever it is. And, uh, you know, mourning too much. Jesus said, do not mourn. For the dead, let the bur dead bury the dead. So if you're still mourning for things from way too long ago, try to understand that Jesus wants you to give glory to him. The mind that stays attuned to these stays in perfect peace. Give him glory. Give him honor. Thanksgiving. So as we continue in Revelation, we see it's a theme of walking in white. For the, for the Laodicean church, to those who overcome, I will grant to sit on my throne, even as I overcame and sat on my father's throne. How did Jesus overcome? He's in the garden of Gethsemane. He's already fulfilled everything he needs to fulfill. He's healed the sick. He's cast out devils. Um, the religious people didn't like his testimony. Listen to the woman at the well. She's had five wives and she ends up finding out he's the messiah and jesus tells her everything about her and she ends up becoming a martyr thank you lord for helping me remember that so she probably was rejected by the samaritans they're like who is this woman preaching jesus she's had five husbands why would we accept her testimony that is the religious spirit my friends when jesus healed the blind they, the, the religious spirit was like, was he really blind? Why'd you do it on the Sabbath? That is the religious spirit. Mary Magdalene had seven demons and Jesus made her whole and, and cleansed her. And she heard the word of God better than anybody else, pretty much. I mean, that's what I read when I read the scripture. She understood that he was going to the cross. She, she wept at his feet. She anointed his head with oil for his, for his death. That he said was coming and then he said uh, I will raise this body in uh, in three days and so you are the resurrected you are resurrected with Christ that's our hope that's our future glory is he is in you you're made to follow him he is, his spirit lives in you and in 2nd Corinthians what is it 5 6 6 I believe 
What fellowship has Christ in me and you with demons? That's what it says. What fellowship has Christ with me and you with unbelievers? That's what it says. It says, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. All who live in Christ are new creatures in Christ. The dead is old. The new is here. Behold, I make all things new. Jesus can take away all the addictions. He can take away that. He can deliver you from depression. He can do all that if you would have faith. So let's talk about the spiritual gifts. Jesus says these signs shall follow believers. They will heal the sick, cast out devils, speak in new tongues. So a true believer will go out, preach the word, and seek out these gifts, and he'll show you what he'll show you some of them. Praise be the mighty name of Jesus. He will speak to you. It says, all who draw near me, I will draw near to you. Cry out to him. He will speak to you. Prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Then there's extra faith. These are nine spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12. Faith to be a martyr. Faith to say to this mountain, move. And, and that mountain will move. Now, I believe that mountain is spiritual Babylon. That mountain, because we fight against not flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, wickedness in high places. So that picture of a mountain is spiritual Babylon right there. It's addictions. It's false religion. It's wicked music. It's it's the love of money. It's It's all of those things. And Jesus is saying, I can deliver you from that. So faith, healing, miracles. So these kinds of things can follow believers. Some for use, some gifts for you, some gifts for her, some different giftings. Are we all the same? No. Paul says, are we all a hand or are we all an eye? Can the eye say to the hand, I don't need you? No. So there, that's why we want to find, we want to seek fellowship of pure saints and, and lay hands on each other to heal, uh, look into each other's eyes, confess anything that's going on so we can walk together, get through things together, um, seek out these spiritual gifts. So faith, healing, miracles, discerner of spirits, uh, this is a, a gift of, have you ever walked into a room and just known something is totally evil or something's totally good and then you're drawn to see something? That is in a small way like a discerner of spirits because you felt something in the room. That's a small way of saying it. Okay, so like sometimes I go preach and I know that it's contention coming. I could just feel it. I'll go walk to the bathroom in Huntington Beach and I even identify who's going to come against me. I, that happened in Huntington and they ended up coming against so that's discerner of spirits, feeling the atmosphere, understanding it, um, speaking in other languages and understanding other languages, nine spiritual gifts. Okay, so one of the gifts is being able to handle persecution, faith. So in Revelation chapter 6, we see this fifth seal opened and we see those crying out, how long, O holy and true, until you judge and avenge the blood of the martyrs? And the answer is not until the fellow brethren and the full prophetic allotment are fulfilled and those souls go under the altar. That is their gift. They're right under the altar of the creator of heaven and earth. And Jesus put white robe, puts white robes on them. So they're coming back with Jesus in Revelation 19. They're guaranteed going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So let's go through some of the blessed bees of Revelation before we get to Polycarp and Hebrews. Blessed are those who read the prophecy of this book and hear it and keep the things that are written therein. Revelation 1. Revelation 14. Blessed are those who die from henceforth, for their works do follow them. Um, blessed are those who are at the marriage supper of the Lamb. These are the true words of God. Is that Revelation 16? Go look it up for yourself. Uh, blessed are those who are awake, which means uh, walking in white. That we're not walking in sin. Some people say a great awakening. You can have so much knowledge and truth, but if you're not born again and walking in white, you're just aware of things. You got to be a holy people set apart for Jesus Christ. So there's more blessed bees in Revelation. Now the book of martyrs, Polycarp. So this is John's disciple that I just read to you, the book of Revelation, his disciple. And you read this in the Fox's book of martyrs. And Polycarp has a vision that he's going to be burned at the stake. And he tells his church. So they've got their little house church, wherever they're meeting at. And he tells his church, I had a vision that I believe is from the Lord. And it's me going to be burned at the stake. Now, some of his church told him, go, go hide in this barn. And so he does. And so he goes and hides in this barn. And people, I believe, in that church were beaten by the Roman authorities and said, where is he? Because the devil always comes after the head of the church. 
He always comes after marriage to divide it. He's trying to divide everything. And so they're coming after Polycarp, John's disciple. Well, it's Christ's disciple, but this is a picture of he is under John's, you know, in John's church. So we're all disciples of Christ. Uh, there is, you know, churches with elders and stuff like that. In this case, Polycarp is under John's church. Best way to say it. And he has a vision he's going to be burned at the stake. And the church tells him, go hide in, in this in this uh, barn. Well, however many miles away, he does it. And he's just trying to wait out the persecution that's coming. Did you know that they used to put Christians up and burn them as, as lamps in the Roman Colosseum? They also used to feed them to lions. So here is Polycarp hidden away. And now the police come, call them the police, whatever you want, Roman people... And they come and they're like, where is he? And people get beat and end up telling on him. And they went and find him and they, they go, he's 80 something years old. And they grab Polycarp and they bring him to the Roman Colosseum. And all he had to do was throw a pinch of incense and say, Caesar is Lord and he wouldn't have to die. Now, according to Fox's Book of Martyrs, people that denied Jesus were not allowed to come back into fellowship. That's how serious it was. Now, I pray that, you know, that... Some of those people were totally saved and had so much remorse and that they weren't, you know, that they were saved. But at that time, they weren't allowed back into fellowship. So you try to fit your pre-trib and you're once saved into all that. This is Christian history. If you want to read up on the deeper things, read up on Irenaeus of Lyons. If you're into all that stuff, go read his All Against Heresies and you'll see the earliest writings about all of that stuff people send their conspiracy videos about. Go read it first. Do the reading. Just don't listen to everybody's conspiracy videos. Do you know that there's lying spirits attached? Do, we, do you even know if these people are born again? Do these people street preach? Have they been under fire? Have, have you seen their fruits when they're getting persecuted? Have you seen how they respond? How do you know, you know who you're listening to? You can have a lot of truth, but have lying spirits in there. And first, or wherever it is in Kings, uh, lying spirits can go forth like a hive from one false teacher to another. So even, not even me, everybody, test everything by the word of God like the Bereans. So here is Polycarp facing death, watching other people out of the book of martyrs. One guy was so bold that he's like, I'll never deny Jesus. And when he saw the lions, he threw the pinch of incense. So we want to know, every, all I can tell you is, by God's Spirit, we can do all things. By God's Spirit, He allows us to do all things. So God gave Polycarp the vision. And then the way it's written is He heard a voice say, finish the race or, you know, however He heard it. Play the part, Polycarp. Go finish the race. And so He had enough encouragement that He was able to say, you know what? I will not deny my Lord Jesus. He's been good to me all these years that I've followed Him. I will not deny Him. So the vision was that he was going to be burned at the stake. But now, by the time he gets up there, all the lions are put away. How perfect is God that the timing is perfect, that all the lions are put away. So now they set Polycarp up to be burned at the stake. And they light him on fire and he would not burn. And the person that was his executioner had a demonic response because his job was on the line. He would not burn. What's up, Andy? God bless, brother. And so Polycarp would not burn. And the account of it in Fox's Book of Martyrs is the guy who was the executioner responded so evilly that he stabbed him. And then the account is that people saw a spirit in the form of a dove fly off him. So he never felt the pain. And Polycarp, even from the account of Fox's Book of Martyrs, said to his sheep, the, the people that he was in charge of, overseer, he was the teacher. He said, see if the Lord keeps me strong through this pain and and the lord did so that must have encouraged so how amazing is that so that's a little teaching on polycarp so let's finish with hebrews to hear about the remnant praise be your mighty name glory be to god in jesus mighty name now i'd like you to think would any of these people jeremiah would jesus tell you to take a sorcery shot I'm telling you right now that people are going to be, well, they already are being persecuted. So we don't want to be the believers that are persecuting other believers, do we? No. So we want to stand with the martyrs. We want to stand with 
those who are teaching the Bible purely and street preaching and standing in front of the Planned Parenthoods or standing in front of the Sodomite bars are just out there pleading with people for their very soul. Our family first, and praise the Lord, there's really good reports about prayers being answered for many of us in the Bible studies with family members listening to the Word of God now, watching some of the street preaching. There's a lot of tears and weeping that goes into uh, street preaching and Bible studies. And so praise be the mighty name of Jesus that God answers prayer. So faith is the substance. This is Hebrews 11. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we believe Jesus rose from the grave. We believe the word that's been handed down. Some of us have heard his spirit talk to us. Some of us know our calling because the Lord Jesus had to deliver us from the darkness for me and put his spirit in me and, and just totally fill me up and show me things and speak to me and encourage me and all these things. So now I'm like a deer panting for more of that from 20 years ago. Has he continued to speak? Yes. As much as in the very beginning? Not really. He was in my, he was with me all the time in the very beginning because I needed it that at that point. So now it's like, okay, so I have faith. I, I believe I'm not going to turn away and, and for you, you've got to believe that Jesus resurrected. That is our hope. That is our glory, that Jesus resurrected. You either believe it or you don't. If you believe it, then you've got to believe everything he said. That's the way it is. You know, he's the only one that said he's going to resurrect on the third day. Nobody else, Buddha, none of them did that. And so why would you even partner with any of that other stuff, the false religions? So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, which, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. What that's saying is, the evil brother killed his brother and his blood cried out, leaving a testimony. And that's what that's saying is so some of the prophets understand that abortion is a blood sacrifice to demons in Psalm 106. It leaves a testimony against the land, truly does in numbers. Okay, false teaching allows Satan to come take over your territory. It truly does. So as the church goes, so does the land. Okay. So sodomite bars popping up, kids being taught they might not be male and female. This is a testimony against the church, my friends. It's a testimony against the land. If you just understand it like a prophet of God and you understand his words, you understand these things and you'll understand why we're standing out there in the gap, crying out, repent, crying out that the church is going to be judged first in 1 Peter 4. Don't you understand everything I've taught up to this, that the, the remnant, the church is judged first the church was judged first in the Old Testament. They were taken into Babylonian captivity. That is the church being judged first. First Peter 4 saying it's going to happen again. The church, the house of the Lord is judged first. And if scarcely a believer be saved, what about the ungodly? So we're going to be saved by fire in 1 Corinthians 3. Believers at the judgment seat of Christ. Have you built on anything other than Christ crucified and resurrected? Have you built on anything else? Drugs. One world religion, you got to come into Jesus as the only way, truth, and the life. You got to give your everything to him and he will deliver you. Okay. And then it says you've built with gold, precious stones, and silver that will remain in 1 Corinthians 3 under the eyes of fire that we talked about in Revelation 1. Read 1 Peter 1. See how all these scriptures fit together. And so we, we have more than anybody else in history with all of this, with all of this internet, with all this understanding, with being able to put the scriptures together. By faith, chapter 11, Hebrews, verse 5, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. That's, that's a rapture. It's a picture of rapture. And was not found because God had translated him, took him, raptured, snatched him, but before his rapture translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Read Second Second Peter two, the way the way Cain spoke. These ungodly people speaking ungodly things. These ungodly sinners. That's how Enoch spoke, and he was very pleasing to the Lord. So be careful on 
if you let your feelings judge more than you let the word of God judge. Just because a person looks doesn't look the way you want them to look. You think any of these prophets looked like like these prophets, these supposed prophets you see on TV? No. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Jesus Christ, our high priest, reward us for diligently seeking you, Lord God. Fill us with your glory. Pour out your spirit on us, Lord God. Let us walk in the power of God. Let men see your power through your faithful believers taking risks for the kingdom of God in these last days. Pour out your spirit, O God. Chapter 11 of Hebrews, verse 7. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Jesus said it's going to be like the days of Noah and the days of Lot, which is Sodom and Gomorrah, as a time to see what it's going to be like, meaning that they weren't hearing the voice of the Lord. They weren't hearing the word. They were too consumed with their things of this world. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went so he was called to go from a house to living in a tent where it was cold in the mountains and he went and it pleased God by faith by faith he sojourned mean traveled in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise for he looked for a city which hath foundations whose builder and maker is God through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Go read Genesis 19 on how God judged Sodom and Gomorrah. Go read it before that. And you're going to see Sarah laugh when, when she's told about he, she's going to conceive. She laughed. It's just sweet. The scriptures are sweet. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead. So many as the stars of the sky and multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. So that was the promise to Abraham. You're, Abraham's an old man. Sarah's an old woman. She's listed as a very beautiful woman, very old, well past childbirth. God said, I'm going to make your seed like the sand in the sea and the stars in the sky. Hallelujah. And they believed well past childbirth and, and God showed him, showed himself <coughs> able. <clears throat> but they believed. Now listen to this, verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that saw such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is a heavenly Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son. So God told him, go sacrifice Isaac. After he had promised him, I'll make your seed like the sand in the sea and the stars in the sky. And Abraham believed that God would raise him from the dead or, or fulfill his promise some other way. And what it is, is a type and shadow of God sending his only begotten son, fulfilling what was needed for us to go to heaven. Our sin debt paid, us believing in it, us believing in his resurrection, and now saying, Lord, I need your spirit in me. You say, I must be born again. I must be of your spirit. I must follow you in spirit and truth. I must deny myself, pick up my cross and follow you. I must be a separate people, a holy people. Peter says, be holy as he is holy. So Jesus is calling you to holiness. And me. And so Abraham obeyed and God stopped it and said, good, you, you listen to me. And this is where we get Jehovah Jireh, God, my provider. And, and that's where we get that. Go read that. So God is my provider. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my redeemer. He's called me. He's set me free. He's chosen me. Hallelujah. 
So Hebrews 11, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave command concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he had come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God, not taking a sorcery shot, not partnering with the one world religion to continue to buy and sell, not doing these things, rather suffer with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ. Are we, aren't we talking about the Old Testament? Yes. And it says esteeming the reproach of Christ. So he is walking in, a, in the spirit of Christ right there to be persecuted. We're all called to be persecuted. If you're a believer, you can't avoid persecution because you're at enmity with the world. It says... Uh, Friendship with this world is enmity with God. Jesus said, woe when all men speak well of you, for so they spoke of the false prophets. Jesus says, you know, you've got to hate your life to find it. If, you've, if you try to save your life, you'll lose it. These are Jesus' words that we're seeing how important they are in these last days. So, by faith, he looked for the reward of a heavenly reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land when the Egyptians essayed to do there were drowned. You can go Google search this. They found Pharaoh's thing underneath the water. They have found, you know, all these things that prove it. They have found the scrolls that prove this Bible is written in perfect within 99%. No matter what version you use, the scrolls that were found around when Israel became a nation in 1948, there's prophetic proof. The Bible, it says in Revelation, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We're not following cleverly devised plans and schemes of men, says Peter. We're following the prophetic word of God and you will do well to follow it like a lamp under your feet. In Psalms, it says, your word is a lamp under my feet. He tells us to eat the word that we will not sin against him. The word fits together scripture by scripture, showing you how perfect God is. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will remain forever. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot, this is beautiful right here. Harlot, I just went to this morning praying, going, I'm like, I'm like the harlot Rahab, but the man. I was delivered from drug trafficking, addictions, violence, all these things, prison violence, very, wrote books about that many years ago, told the truth exactly how it was. Mm. And here's the proof that no matter where you're at, because she's listed in the great men of faith, Rahab the prostitute, she took care of them, the spies that came, she took care of God's people. She believed and she testified, and she by faith protected unto her own death. That was the provenness of her faith right there. Okay, and what shall I say more? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah. Jephthah, do a study on that. He was, uh, you know, a street uh, like a like a street person who they needed a tough warrior, and he was a tough warrior to deal with the idolatry of the time. And the Lord put His Spirit on him to to. To do things in the book of Judges. Of David also and of Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms. Now tell me, would any of these people be partnering with this one world religion? Would any of these people be persecuting other Christians for not taking the sorcery shot? Would any of these people in all of Hebrews 11 be doing that? No, none of them would. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions in the book of Daniel, quenched the violence of fire in the book of Daniel, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to the flight, turned 
turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. Told you Isaiah was, Jeremiah was, uh, stoned by rocks. Many of them. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in caves and dens of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So we're perfect. We're, we're, be, we're, we're given more than that through Christ Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. I hope this blessed you. Amen, Andy. God bless you. God bless everybody else. Praying for everybody's family first, that not one would perish outside the gates. We want everyone in the family first to be born again, to love ministry, to love being a king and priest unto our God, to love the things God loves and to hate the things God hates. Put down the pipe, put down the drugs, put down the fornication, put down that stuff and come into God's kingdom as a delivered saint, as a purified saint, walking out our salvation with fear and trembling for our family first, then for the land for the churches that are falling away. We don't want anyone to perish. We don't want Second Peter 2. We don't want those things happening to false teachers or in Jude, where it says certain men have crept in unaware, taking the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and turning it into lasciviousness. We're going to see him as he is and be known as we are on that glorious day where we're tested by fire. He's going to wipe away every tear. I believe some of that is we're going to understand we could have done more for his kingdom. We could have been more of a fool for Christ. And, and we don't want to leave anything on the table. We want to be willing to be uh, witnesses, which is another word for martyr for Christ in these last days. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Bless everybody in Jesus' mighty name today. Be with. May the peace of God be with you. Amen.